Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. I hope that you are all doing well and that you are all having a great day. On the topic of Ethereum scaling, it appears that something that will help Ethereum scale is already available. Revealed exclusively to Coindesk, the raw architecture of TurboGeth has been completed and is currently available to early adopters for testing. Someone by the name of Alexei Akunov, the independent software developer that built the software, told Coindesk that unlike many other scaling solutions, TurboGeth looks at tackling Ethereum's so-called state instead of transaction congestion and cost. The term state in this context describes the ever-increasing history of all computations of the network. By rewriting Geth, the Ethereum's foundation's in-house software for interacting with the blockchain, Akunov said he's cut down storage time to one-fifth its current size. This approach allows Ethereum nodes to run on cheaper hardware, What's more, it's something that many in the Ethereum community are passionate about because less expensive hardware helps keep the network decentralized. He said we probably can go 10x just from optimizations. He said this on a scalability panel during the Ethereum conference DAPCON that happened this summer in Berlin, alluding to code improvements that could streamline Ethereum before its upgrades to scaling tech sharding. The statement was received with much applause. It aligns with the anticipation many in the industry feel for Aquanov's work, heralded as one of Ethereum's most promising scaling solutions, although one not pegged to the formal scaling roadmap. So we have other people who are actually working on trying to help Ethereum scale because we have a, we have a number of solutions in the works, I guess you could kind of say around three or four at the moment, that are more popular or more mainstream that we hear about more often. You don't typically hear about uh, this solution. But I'm pretty sure there are at least 10 to 15 that people are trying to work on, especially if they're even trying to uh, work on some uh, additional side chains when it comes to Ethereum. This has been happening for quite some time now. I don't know how hopeful I am on this, just being 100% honest. Uh, not to say that it is not going to work. I mean, in the context of we've constantly had news over the last two years that at some point Ethereum would scale and now it is not scaling and everyone keeps saying that they have a solution for it. And even if you remember some time in the summer, there were a couple of people who, there were a lot of like, uh, you know, that, that thing that happened in May. Uh, there was the other thing that happened in like April. There, there was constant uh, conferences and every single time someone from the Ethereum team or someone who was part of the scaling solution uh, party came forward and said that they had proposed something or they had something that was in the works or that something that was almost being completed and that it would be implemented soon or that we would have it. And then we had also, um, I don't remember who said it at this point anymore. Someone said that by September or October, we would have some type of scaling solution. And I haven't heard a word from that anymore. Like there's been no even whispers of it. So I doubt that's even going to happen right now. Uh, but as it stands, uh, at least we can be rest assured that, uh, People are definitely working on trying to scale Ethereum. If it's actually going to happen in 2018 anymore, I have, I'm, I'm gunning for 2019 at this point. I, I've not lost faith in Ethereum in 2018, but letting them do what they have to do, and this is going to be definitely an in-between year for the uh, Ethereum community, whatever you kind of want to say. Next up, Binance is in the news. Paxos. PAX is the latest stablecoin making connections in the crypto economy with Binance, Binance almost immediately adding the asset to its portfolio. The exchange, which has the largest Tether wallet and also a true USD wallet, went ahead with the listing despite concerns that PAX is a centrally controlled coin, which would allow law enforcement to freeze funds. They said Binance has opened deposits for Paxos Standard Token, or PAX, trading with uh, Binance Coin and BTC trading pairs will open at a later date, and we will make a separate announcement prior to this, the exchange said in a statement, end quote. There is uh, yet no known pairing between stablecoins, theoretically. Uh, sharing USDT, TUSD, and other stablecoins offers tradies, traders a chance to move assets between exchanges. Binance founder Changpeng Zhao believes that listing stablecoins will increase connectivity in the crypto sector, stating that those assets act like bridges. There has also been talk of Binance listing Gemini Dollar or GUSD, G -S -D, in effect connecting an important US-based exchange with one of the most active markets for Bitcoin and altcoins. However, PAX has triggered unease due to the potential of law enforcement of the token or the token issuers to freeze assets. 
This is a token based on the Ethereum network, and like many others, it can be centrally controlled. According to a tweet, the option to freeze or burn balances is also open to law enforcement. Tether has locked tokens during an attempted theft, and Ethereum-based assets like Bancor and KickCoin have been centrally controlled by the teams. This also means that PAX balances are not immutable. PAX is a dollar-backed stablecoin um, approved by the authorities of the New York State. No, really, no, I don't have to read anymore. Uh, to be fair, a lot of the stablecoins don't run on like a decentralized, you know, it, there's no reason to have a decentralized stablecoin, if that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the point of decentralized uh, blockchains or DLTs or even cryptocurrencies that we are using is so that everyone around the world can use them. The people who are issuing these stablecoins have no desire or real economic need to be able to take control away from themselves in order to be able to issue that coin. The point of a stable coin is to be able to swap your money out of, or rather the crypto that you see falling, to swap it out of it uh, and go into another stable coin that is then controlled by the other people. Like, don't assume that the Gemini dollar, uh, they may say that it's decentralized, but we've also had news a couple of days ago uh, that the Gemini dollar can also be controlled. There were also concerns that uh, that they're able to freeze and or halt transactions simply because the same way like PaxCoin, the Gemini dollar is also or was approved by the New York State blah, blah, blah. And therefore, there's some level or degree of government control behind it simply because they have to know exactly what's going on. They know uh, it's like approved, if you will. Like it's like bank approved, quote unquote. Uh, as far as like, you know, they can see exactly what's going on as well. They have to be extremely transparent with the U.S. government and the New York government as well to show them that they actually have the money to back up the uh, Gemini dollar and all the other things. Uh, so, like I said, don't be uh, uh, fooled for a moment and think that any of these are like hyper decentralized. Even some of the largest cryptocurrencies that we have right now uh, have some level of centralization. I, I tried to explain before. I don't know if I did it very well. Uh, when it comes to security and decentralization, and I forgot the other third peg on, on the triangle, it's very difficult to get all of these together. So when it comes to someone launching a stable coin, especially one that they are more or less using for profit, let's be honest, uh, there's no reason for them to be uh, hyper decentralized as it were. Uh, and I think the funniest part out of all of this is that we've had so many other, we've had so much hate against Tether and had so many other uh, stable coins that have been coming out the last couple of weeks and all this other stuff. And it just so turns out that uh, the stable coin uh, that at least is, I don't want to say the most decentralized, the one that's not that bad um, actually ends up being Tether, the one that people have been spitting on for the longest. Kind of ironic. At least to me, that's kind of how I see it. Anyway, moving on. Next up. Recently, UNICEF France announced on their official website that they will now accept donations in the form of a host of cryptocurrencies towards the aid of children. To make the donations, donors can go to the UNICEF France website and choose from a list of nine cryptocurrency options, which include Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, Stellar Lumens, Litecoin, Dash, and Monero. UNICEF France believes that with this move, the humanitarian agency could act attract, attract a new category of donors effectively spreading this area or their area of reach for funding. Sebastian Leon, the executive director of UNICEF France, stated, Cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology for charitable purposes offer a new opportunity to appeal to the generosity of the public and continue to develop our actions with children in our countries of intervention. I just thought I'd throw this in there. I'm not being paid by UNICEF, uh, but I like uh, extra use cases for cryptocurrencies. I also like the idea of donations. I like helping other people. So this, if you are feeling generous, uh, whenever you are listening to this video and you thought, you know, I can shed one or two XRP to be able to help kids around the world, uh, go to UNICEF France. I don't have a, a link for their website. I'm pretty sure you can just literally Google UNICEF France and you'll probably be taken right there. Anyway, uh, it's kind of cool. I'm one, I'm glad that they didn't just choose Bitcoin, Ethereum, like XRP completely aside. Thank goodness that at least someone in their uh, faction understands that there are other cryptocurrencies out there. Thank goodness. Uh, anyway, the point is uh, just wanted to throw that in there just in case anyone was feeling generous and was looking to make a donation to uh, help other people in the world. This one's actually kind of good. XP Group 
owner of the largest investment bank in Brazil, XB Investimentos, confirmed it would launch a cryptocurrency exchange this week. Actually, last week, a couple days ago, despite its CEO saying he wished it didn't exist. As Bloomberg reported, quoting Guillerme Benchimol at an event in Sao Paulo, XP will finally give in to investor demand and begin a Bitcoin and Ethereum trading operation after six months of rumors. He said, I must confess, this is a theme I'd rather didn't exist, but it does. The publication reported as saying, he said, I felt obligated to start advancing in this market, end quote. Like many South American markets, Brazil has seen a palpable uptick in Bitcoin trading activity. While its figures do not match those of markets such as Chile, Argentina, and Venezuela, weekly volumes for peer-to-peer -peer transaction local Bitcoins alone regularly tops 1.5 million real, or around 360,000 US dollars. XP Investimentos has been planning its entry into the market since at least April. Insiders telling the press at the time a crypto trading platform was coming. The company registered an entity called XP Coin Intermedia Cao in August of last year. The final product will go by the name of XDEX, perhaps a nod to the decentralized exchange phenomenon, and involve a team of around 40. This was said by Bloomberg. Brazil's extent exchange. Extend, yeah. Excellent exchange and wider cryptocurrency business sector is meanwhile struggling with an increasingly hostile landscape involving banks. Similar to complaints in Poland in recent months, a government agency is now investigating claims that those businesses are subject to account shutdowns by institutions which would rather not deal in crypto related transactions. They said it does not seem reasonable for banks to apply restrictive measures a priori on a straight line basis to all crypto companies. Without examining the level of compliance and anti-fraud measures adopted by individual brokerage firms, this was said by someone at Reuters. What I think is interesting about all of this, uh, and I'm not even joking, the funniest part is that when they said, I'd rather it not exist, and they felt obligated to actually start something like this, this, this means not only did they not really want to at all, but something or someone deep inside told them, you have to do this or we are going to lose money. Uh, I like uh, stories like this. I think it's very interesting, not only uh, for a new crypto exchange to open in a country or a region where there are barely any or not a large majority of cryptocurrency exchanges around there that people can use and trust, uh, but because other people in traditional finance are now uh, kind of forced uh, to play by the whim of people. I, I don't know. I, I think it's all very fascinating. I love uh, stories like this. Uh, let's see exactly when they do do this. If there is an uptick in the amount of uh, volume and stuff that's happening on the cryptocurrency exchanges. But as of now, this is the news that we have at least for today. Next up, just like what already happened with the US dollar and the euro, among others, Australia is about to get its first Aussie backed stablecoin. This will be made possible by a partnership between BitTrade, one of the oldest cryptocurrency exchanges in Australia, and blockchain employment firm Imparta. Okay, the two firms will collaborate in designing and launching the stablecoin, which is expected to be launched next year. Here's the tweet. Here's a handshake. Scrolling down. According to the managing director of BitTrade, Jonathan Miller, the AUD backed stablecoin will fill a gap that exists in the market as it will act as a buffer against the wild fluctuations associated with cryptocurrencies. Stablecoins solve one of the principal issues that may drive investors seeking steady returns and merchants that currently accept traditional currency away from digital currencies volatility. This was said by Miller in a statement. He said, we believe that stablecoins will boost trust, accelerate widespread adoption, and could function as the backbone of blockchain-based financial applications, especially here in Australia, given the favorable regulatory environment, uh, end quote. So that is the 18th, 17th, 18th? Stablecoin that we have, no, maybe like 18 or 19 that we've had uh, sp spoken about this year. Uh, I guess it's going to be the first one that's based on the Australia dollar. We had news a couple of days ago that they are trying to do one as well in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's one go that's going to be based on the euro as well. And I can only assume eventually we'll have one that's pegged to the ruble, especially uh, the, I'm pretty sure the government will. If, if the government doesn't announce that they're creating one, some organization that has some type of ties to the government uh, will announce that they are, are creating one simply because I know the government likes to have control over things in their country. 
point is we are going to have tons of these and i told you guys before i said it, it seems very weird i told you even before we had news that other countries was were, were going to start doing this i said wouldn't it be really weird if other countries are like not, you know not to say that australia themselves is actually doing this but other stable coins that are actually pegged to uh fiat that are allowed for like crypto trading back and forth because think of kind of think of it this way it's difficult right now for a lot of people to be able to cash out from the crypto market into fiat because banks are not too friendly when a lot of banks aren't too friendly when it comes to cryptocurrencies right now. But imagine if merchants around the world started accepting stable coins, i.e., you know, they're the closest thing that's pegged to the value of their actual currency that they have inside of their country. Imagine if you were simply able to pay someone in crypto or cash out of crypto into a stable coin and then use that stable coin as opposed to using your normal fiat currency, especially if these had like enough backing from their governments and you were simply able to like have like on a, you know, an actual one to one basis. Like what if governments don't have to create crypto because someone's already creating a stable coin that's based on their currency and should they get more funding? Same thing like Tether, how they have like billions of them right now. Imagine if someone gave a stable coin project you know, over the course of a year, hundreds of investors, they gave them $50 billion and they were then allowed to create 50 billion euros worth of this stable coin that was then pegged to the euro. And instead of having to cash out other merchants around the oh, I almost said country, around the continent started accepting that instead. And you were able to simply just cash out your money into a crypto that was also on your phone so that you could also still pay in crypto. Really interesting, right? It's, it's interesting to think about why there's so many of these going around. I wonder if these, uh, if, if governments fail to be able to properly create their own crypto in time if these not could take over but like be like a substitute in like a some sort of way like i don't i i expect a lot of uh pushback from many governments when it comes to actually like you know uh not using their currency anymore in a couple of years especially if if crypto ends up taking over but i could see this being an alternative if they like sign some type of like memorandum with the government saying that uh, this will be pegged to our currency. It'll be crypto and it'll be on a one-to-one -one basis. You, you can swap back and forth between it, but you can also swap your normal. I don't know. I, I don't know. Just popped into my head. It seems like it could be very plausible. It will be interesting if it does happen. I, I assume if if by the end of next year, if there's a uh, at least two stable coins for every single country on earth, that's a pretty clear indication of, of where things are probably going to try and go. Last up. Global trading volumes in crypto assets are set, set, are set to overtake those in U.S. corporate debt markets. Despite this year's market setbacks, this was said in a report. It is one of the findings in the fifth in a series of reports by Research and Intelligence House Status Group, initiating coverage of the crypto asset class. Extrapolating from historical trading data, Status estimates 2018 trading volume for crypto will be around 7.3% trillion dollars 243 billion more than u.s corporate debts which currently sits around 0.7.05 trillion dollars this is impressive given that we are still in the depths of the bear market the bottom of which we may be finally witnessing quoting that i did actual air quotes by way of further comparison u.s treasuries has 121 trillion dollars and u.s equities has 74 trillion dollars of volume tower over both U.S. corporate debt and crypto trading. See bar chart below. Okay, I will. Nevertheless, the findings attest to the dramatic growth of the crypto of the ecosystem developing around crypto in these still early days for the asset class. Here's the graph they wanted to show us. Something I find very interesting that I was um, explaining to someone about a day or two ago. We were talking about, um, there are a lot of articles. I don't know if you've seen them floating around talking about uh like the upcoming stock market crash. We had news a couple of days ago that JP Morgan was talking about in 2020, we're going to have another stock market crash and it won't be that bad. And I was, I was thinking the, the amount of people who have been in wall street, uh, working there or working in one of the other buildings around it, maybe in this building, uh, they've all left or a lot of them have been leaving wall street and traditional finance. And they've been moving over to crypto. And I said, doesn't it seem kind of weird that we're getting these predictions, uh, that by 2020, we're supposed to have, you know, this uh, another market crash, another recession, what have you. Uh, but all of these people are leaving Wall Street, even though we have been had it's, it's a 10 year bull run right now on on uh, stocks and bonds and, and the stock market. It's a 10 year bull run and prices aren't slowing down. We have like two companies that are now valued over a trillion dollars. It's interesting that to me. In the midst of a bull market, when prices are going up and you can only see profits continuing, that thousands 
rough estimate of people have left traditional finance and banking and have moved exclusively over to cryptocurrencies, even though during the nine month period, prices have been going down. I feel like something is happening. Uh, this isn't conspiracy theory me. Uh, this is more so like it's 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 odd. I, I know I'm not the only one who uh, sees this or thinks about this. Why would you leave traditional finance if traditional finance is so much more stable, especially if prices are continuing to go up? And at least, you know, over the next two years, you're going to have healthy profits. And then why would you get into a cryptocurrency market as prices are continuing to fall down? I feel like something is in the works. Uh, you may have noticed as well when we get like predictions as far as like from analysts and like senior analysts, not just like people who are, you know, been into crypto for about six and a half months and they think they know everything, but people who've been into finance since like the, you know, 60s and 70s, they're a little up there in age, but uh, when they talk on TV, they make a lot of sense and they talk about the things that uh, weren't fixed in the 2008 crisis, uh, what we still have to do, how far we have to go. And they all have these predictions that the next stock market crash or the next market crash in general won't just be a recession. It'll be like a depression almost. Like it'll be something that's so massive that a large amount of people in the world uh, will have a hard time. That's the easiest way for me to say it. But they these always come around the year 2019, 2000. Um, I haven't seen any predictions around like 2021 yet as far as like a, a major market crash. It's always like 2020 is like the pegged time. But this is also the time when crypto infrastructure will have been built up so much that even more people in traditional finance will have moved over to us. So what happens when all the big titans from Wall Street and from traditional finance have, you know, swooped over, moved over into crypto, and then the stock market crashes and all the people who were in the other uh, financial world now move over to the uh, stock market 2.0 and start telling other people to start putting their money into uh, crypto and other assets and other security tokens. And then should we enter some type of recession or great or depression? No one knows exactly how severe this is going to be. What then happens if this happens in 2020? Crypto infrastructure has been built up for around two years, give or take, and is very solid. You know, the markets are doing pretty great. And everyone starts dumping their money in fear from the traditional stock market into crypto because they see that over the last two years, crypto has been doing well. This also ties in with the, the price predictions that we're getting from people that Bitcoin by 2020, once again, 2020, will be anywhere from quarter of a million to $1 million. Isn't it very weird how everything is kind of uh, slowly adding up? We, we've had these numbers and stuff like that. There have been people who are predicting that the stock market crash for quite some time now. This isn't like a brand new thing. We've also had people predicting the price of Bitcoin hitting quarter of a million to a million since around 2015, maybe the end of 2014, 2016, like somewhere in that time frame. And as we get closer to 2019 and everything is starting to like kind of make sense and all the people who were on Wall Street, even there's so many people, even we had news a couple of days ago from um, Coinbase that they had hired like 100 new people and they were all like people who were from Wall Street. Isn't it? it it's, it's all, I mean, I guess we'll find out in about two years, you know, time, time waits for no one. So we will eventually get there. But uh, I wonder how finance is going to be shaped if... Because we, at this point, even now, we're able to tokenize just about everything. You know, when this infrastructure for that is even built up even further, and we're simply able to tokenize stocks and bonds and stuff like that, and throw them onto a blockchain or throw them onto the uh, what the New York Stock Exchange is creating and just putting it onto like changing all the stocks over to into blockchain and bringing them over into our world, will then the old financial structure completely collapse and everything is just tokenize and everything is just blockchain. I don't know. Uh, the, the the fact that crypto is still doing, even though prices are down, uh, crypto is still doing extremely well from where we were even last year. The market is still up as it were. Uh, air quotes once again, it's down, but it's actually up if you look at prices uh, how they were in 2017. I don't know. It's just all quite interesting. I uh, wonder where we're always going. I wonder where this is leading to. I wonder... Uh, if the predictions that we've had, the, some of the craziest predictions will actually happen. I mean, logically, should something detrimental happen to the world economy and we're in 2019 and we get stuff on TV telling, you know, how great Bitcoin is doing, even though uh, the world is collapsing and, you know, there, there's hyperinflation or like even, you know, the US dollar is up by 6% inflation. Like what would that would cause a mass exodus of money from gold from silver from metals uh from the stock market and from dollars and euros and all these other currencies into bitcoin and that's kind of where we, we get these predictions from interesting to think about just something to <laughs> something to think about on your on your way to work or when you're going back home all right everyone that is definitely going to do it for this video hope you all enjoyed 
Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Thank you once again for watching and or listening, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.